So, all right. Don't want to hear it. I know it's been over a year, and and we apologize, but we have lives, people. So, you know, uh, if you've enjoyed the last three and you've been waiting a year, we apologize. We, we thought you would have something better to do with your lives than wait on episode four of this, but, you know, <laughs> thanks for your patience. We really hope it pays off. Uh, welcome to Unscripted, episode four. Yay! Yay! We, we, we're here at episode four, a year later, but we're here. And today we're going to be talking about the history of the first-person shooter, which is a pretty big deal. It's, mm. the, sh- the shooters was was a, a big thing. Well, are a big thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those main genres of game that people think of when you think about games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it probably would have overtaken the platformer as... The first thing people think of when they think of a video game. Mm-hmm. Oh, especially in this day. It'll be age. fair enough to say. Yeah, yeah. You, if you'd been back in the nineties and you said video game, you'd have been talking Mario Sonic. But mm-hmm. now, year two thousand nineteen, you say video game, Call of Duty, and things like that come straight to your mind. Or Fortnite. Or f- <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> we, oh man, I can't believe we brought that up in one of our videos. But here, but this is the big question, people. Where did it all begin? I just dropped my phone. I'm so sorry. It began when you smashing your phone. Yep, it, it has my list on it. And I'm <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so professional, so professional. So hang on. So let let let's let's start right at the very begin. So some people mightn't realize it, but first person shooters might have might have started in 1973. Wonder how many people were shouting Doom. <laughs> Doom was the first one. Yeah, everyone shouting Doom at me at the or at their. Phones. That's not even the right wrong answer. It's not even. <laughs> you're, that's right. It's not even the right <laughs> wrong answer. Um, but yeah, everyone. So, well, I say everyone. There's a lot of people who think that the first person shooter started in 1973 with a game called Maze War. I, I I have seen Maze War being played. I've never played it myself, obviously. But we are why ta- would you? Exactly. We are talking a really basic game, um, and very much like uh, uh, that game we talked about previously. One of these, the Monster Maze. Yeah, it, it kind of worked like that, where you could just sort of turn ninety degrees each. Time. Was it ASCII art? I think it was as well. Like everything's made of characters. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but again, you sort of just. You you nothing on screen really. You didn't have, really have ammo or health. You sort of just tried to hunt each other down and you know click your mouse and boom, you're dead. So you did actually shoot. I'm making well, air quotes. I, I don't think there was either shooting either. I think you might have been wizards shooting like fireballs from a staff. You're shooting something. You're shooting something, but it didn't really have what you would call the whole first person shooter thing. It was more like a sort of ninety degree corridor type job. So. While I can see why some people would say that, I think our real origin begins nearly 15 years later, nearly 15 years later, in 1987, with Midi Maze. Midi Maze. Midi Maze. See, I thought I said it right that time. Midi. Midi. uh, Midi Maze. So Midi Maze was like this wee game. uh, I can't remember who developed it. I am sorry. But imagine, we'll we'll get footage for you, but it's going to be like, you'll see it yourself. It's Pac-Man. But instead of collecting the dots, you shot the dots at other Pac-Man. Um, and one hit... The, it actually looks like Pac-Man? The, the wee characters look like Pac-Mans. Jeez, how did they not get sued? I don't know, because they had wee smiles on their faces, and they had wee eyeballs. So they kind of look more like a wee acid man, actually, now that I think about it. They were like wee smiley acid man faces. <laughs> but you sort of, you'd go around, and you would shoot. Uh, you literally shot wee dots out, and it was one hit, and you were like, oh, you got killed. All right? Now, the crazy thing about this game, I think, is this is a fantastic fact. So, 87, that came out, and this is where people started getting the idea of it. The game got repackaged as Faceball 2000 on the Game Boy, all right? Faceball 2000. 2000. In 1991, this got released, all right? Right. On the Game Boy. And do you want to know an incredible fact about this game? Go. It had 16 player multiplayer. On a Game Boy? On the Game Boy. And how how did you manage that? So... I didn't know about this till I read this. Obviously, everyone remembers the link cables of the Game Boy. Yeah, but that was like two. two way. There used to be four way adapters. Oh. And what you could do was link four of these four way adapters together. And if you had 16 Game Boys and 16 copies of Faceball, you had 16 player deathmatch. That's like the first, <laughs> first person Jitter LAN party. Yeah. With Game Boys. With Game Boys. I thought this was amazing. Like, wait a minute, you're telling me the multiplayer shooter didn't start life on PC? It started on the Game Boy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Nintendo? You kept that secret? 
I'd have been flaunting that off every fucking two seconds. Look that, at us. That's absolutely crazy. Um, imagine Nintendo probably doesn't know much about this because this sounds very hacked together. Uh, I think it may have been. So, yeah. It was probably just the cheapest way of lamming things together instead of 16 PCs back in those days. But in the game, they must have had to give you the ability to do that as well. In baseball? Yeah. Well, yeah, you could. This is what I'm saying. This wasn't like there a... must have been something to it. This wasn't like a hack thing. This was the actual game but I don't I'd, like I said I don't know who developed this or anything Nintendo might even be aware that this game existed I wipe it off wipe it the effort in <laughs> how many the people are, go- are going to be in that situation where you can actually do that <laughs> I thought that was absolutely amazing fact that's madness that that <laughs> Look, the first yeah that, that, that is absolutely crazy the first multiplayer deathmatch started on the Game Boy and it wasn't just like two player it was 16 that's amazing like, imagine, like, 16 player, and you'd, you'd had to have been, like, back in those, you'd be in your school, and it'd been, like, break or lunchtime or something, and then you'd all been trying to get linked together Just in cables time. cables everywhere. For a game of baseball before your fucking lunch break was over. But I, I thought that was brilliant. So, the same year, however, 1991, uh, a, a small company made a game called Catacomb 3D. Um, and this was obviously moving on from MIDI maze. So... Catacomb was a series of games that were basically a rip-off of Gauntlet. So it was. Um, but in first person? No, 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 no. The first ones weren't. The oh, okay. Catacomb 3D was when they decided, right. And so the 3D part, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only weapon you had, though, was a wee hand on your screen that shot wee fireballs. But so, how did this look? Did it use the... The mouse and keyboard. But, but did it use the same type of graphic style as you likes of... Doom and well, it was way before that. So you're talking this was 16 color sort of, and it well, was a small sp- postage stamp of a screen. I suppose still up until now, you would have had people releasing the the dungeon crawler yes. type of game, which was always first person, but not in real time. You know, you move mm. forward a screen, move forward a screen. Yeah, exactly. So this was someone trying to make a game like those, but in real time, sort of more action based. Yeah, you move forward. You. You push up, you move forward mm-hmm. continuously until you stop it. And yeah, it's not screen per screen. Yeah, exactly. No, no, or static screen. Well, that's how, that's how the, the, the Maze War played, the first <clears throat> game we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. But the the guy that made this... Ah, see, that's why I wouldn't count that. You wouldn't then? You don't have full no. control of your movement? No, you don't. Yeah. Right, okay. So the, we will... Right, officially Evil G discounts Maze War as a first-person shooter then? Yep. Right. So we started. It's disqualified. It's disqualified. We started at eighty-seven with midi maze or midi maze. I um, mean, one of the things the first-person shooters they have to be action games. Yes. That's not action. Yeah. I mean, we should point that out during this video as well. We will literally just be talking about first-person shooters, not just first-person games in general. It's first-person shooter. That's what we're discussing here. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Catacomb Three D was made by a guy called John Carmack. Oh. Oh. Who's that guy? Oh, who's that guy? Well, sounds like an asshole. <laughs> no, the other one's the asshole. John Romero's the asshole. Yeah, he sounds like an asshole too. <laughs> Wait, which one's the one that's the nerd and which one's the rock star? Uh, Romero thinks he's the rock star. Yeah, yeah he's the guy with the hair. And yes. He's going to make you his bitch. Yes, yes, that's him. That's him. <laughs> um, so in 1992, John and John got together because John Carmack was amazing at using technology and John Romero had all these mad ideas. Mm-hmm. And when they came together in 92, they decided, right, we're going to make a game. And Carmack was like, hey, I've got this amazing engine. We should do something with this. And Romero was like, hey, I just watched War Eagles Dinner last night. Let's shoot some Nazis. And, th- and thus, Wolfenstein 3D was born. Now, if you thought Doom was the start of the first person shooter and we were telling you you had the wrong, wrong, or the wrong, right answer, or the right, wrong answer, this is where it really started, I believe. Th- this is the right, wrong answer. Yeah, this is the right, wrong answer. But at the same time, <laughs> The idea of what a first-person shooter is, this kind of is mm-hmm. the genesis yep. of it. Like, um, there's precursors that, like, that you've talked about, but the proper mm-hmm. graphically looking the way it does. Yeah. Um, yeah what we, the first one. What we perceive as a first-person shooter today, this is where it started. You yeah. had multiple you know, weapons, you had multiple enemy types, you had a campaign you know, but it was very basic. You know, you've been captured, get away from the Nazis. But it was this. This is where it all started. Um, this this was huge. Like this was like before Wolfenstein 3D. PC gaming was very much like your, you know, your sort of yeah, those dungeon crawler type things, dungeon crawler type stuff. 
Mm. Very text heavy. Mm. And then static screens. Everyone's seen Wolfenstein 3D, and suddenly console players were like, Woo! but there's no way a console back then could have handled no chance in hell. You can't handle Carmax math. <laughs> we can't handle <laughs> Carmax math. You can you can shove your 16 bit you know machines up your hole. It's not going to do it. Although I've, I know back uh, we're jumping forward a couple of years, but we'll go back. Don't worry. But 95, I think the Super Nintendo got Wolfenstein. Really? Yeah, because do you remember they removed all the Nazi symbols and they moved removed Hitler's mustache and all, and instead of dogs, they replaced them with giant rats. Because no one likes to shoot dogs. No one likes to shoot, you know, German shepherds. Um, but th- this was like, this was the game that made consoles, you know, sort of go, fuck, we can't do this. And it was the game that really put the PC gaming. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, front and center. And everyone thought this was it. This was like, this was going to be gaming for the next couple of years. Um, but again, a year, just a year later, one year later, Carmack and Romero were at it again. And I think this is. Was this time like I've been listening to Slayer? Oh yeah, <laughs> this, this time they had gone nuts. They were like, right, uh, let let's do this crazy and Doom. Now Doom is Doom would be the daddy of the first person. I mean, obviously we can't take away anything from Wolfenstein. It is the grandpappy of them. Yeah, but it's nowhere near the the success of no. of Doom. Doom, how hard it hit and like the the impact it made. Oh, it's crazy. Um. Is this true? I always wondered if this is true. Is it true at one stage Doom had a larger install base than Windows? I'm not sure. Because uh, uh, that, that, that seems impossible. That's what I was about to say. Is that even possible? <laughs> well, you have, you can run games in, in DOS, but... Um, mm. But th- this was... Obviously, it was hot shit. I mean, everyone wanted Doom. Also, Windows didn't really take off till Windows 95. Oh, yeah, good point. So... Maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So, I mean, and the way they released Doom was genius as well, because remember they give you the first episode for free, and then if you wanted the rest of the game, you bought oh, it. Oh, what did you call them again? Free Shareware? Freeware? No, the, the level packs. Oh, the episodes. Oh, the first one was called Knee no, Deep no. in the Dead. They, they have a, a name. Oh, I can't remember. Wads? Wads. Yeah, where's all the data? <laughs> Wads. Wads. Yeah, so you get the first Wad for free, and then... Uh, but and Yes, that is a shareware model. Yep. Got it out there. Yep. Uh, like and like, you really think of the, the visual style mm. and the way like nothing looked like that. Mm-mm. Nothing moved like even Wolfenstein. Like, nothing moved with that speed no. and the responsiveness of it. Um, like t- in today's age, Doom probably looks fucking you know. Oh, what the hell! But I see- still think Doom looks. And there's been changes made. That's a great thing about Doom. I mean, Romero still makes. Doom levels, he yeah. still makes wads and releases them <laughs> for free. Yep. And people are still do they have, people have done so much with Doom mm. to mod it and add more to it, add full mouse support where it's not you, you know, you can aim up mm. um ways to make it harder. Then like, you people doing full overhauls like that brutal Doom. Yeah. It's it's, it's like to, to try and say that Doom's still like the the original Doom is still really popular. It's still relevant today. Yeah, 25 I years I guarantee later. you can get online and play a multiplayer game of Doom Deathmatch right now. Yep. And that's the other big thing Doom brought was Deathmatch. I mean, oh, yeah. this was this was the first time this was heard of. This was the birth of multiplayer first-person mm. shooters. Yep. Um, I remember hearing stories about, you know... Sorry, uh, Game Boy. Sorry, Game Boy. <laughs> I remember hearing stories, though, that IT guys had to, like, put in anti-Doom software to stop Offices coming to a crash because Doom was that popular, which I could totally believe. Like you know, would no, you nobody's getting anything done because everyone's <laughs> playing Deathmatch, <laughs> shooting each other instead. Brilliant, but obviously you know, 1993 was the probably the one of the biggest breakout years of the first person shooter. And again, the console was had nothing close to it. No, nothing. not not till its next generation would it be even be Aye. able to attempt this sort of stuff. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, I I remember as well like the. I didn't, obviously, you know, was a young kid then, mm. wouldn't have had a PC or anything, and, and I would have avidly watched Games Master, and I know yep. one of the, the challenges they had for one of their golden joysticks was a Doom Deathmatch, yep. and couldn't wrap my head around how this was even happening. Yep. It's like, how are they all, what? Because <laughs> multiplayer was me, it's like you're playing off the same screen, or it's yeah. a split screen, or what? Yep. It's, like, it's exactly it. 
I think that's that's crazy. That's, I'm not I'm not trying to just sound cool for this video, but that was the first time I saw Doom as well was Games Master. Yeah, blew my mind. So, I, I to this day, um, it'll always be one of my favorite game series. But obviously, back then, it, what, we keep calling them first person shooters. They weren't even called that at this stage. No, they were just called shooting games. And then when Doom was released, they were called Doom clones. I guarantee that someone has referred to Doom as a shoot 'em up. Oh, which is really not no not, Sh- shoot 'em up some more like you know Ikaruga and yeah you know things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the, everything at this point from then on was called the Doom clone, and then all these developers seen how successful Doom was, and they wanted it on it. Mm-hmm. So believe it or not, the next year, 1994, a company called Bungie, you may have heard of them. Oh, and it, yeah, well, I wasn't going to owe because, oh, Bungie, I yeah. was going to owe because I know what you're about to talk about. Marathon. Uh, the thing they did before Halo for the Apple II, was it? Yes. This. Uh, th- have you ever... Obviously, you have seen pictures, and I imagine you're going to have footage mm-hmm. of that, but just go look at the rocket launcher Ooh. and be like, uh, that's the rocket launcher that's from Halo. Halo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I mean, if you even look at the, again, I'll, we'll have footage here, but the character's hands when he's dual wielding, they're Master Chief's hands. Mm. <laughs> it's like, right, okay, Bungie's were really lazy when you were designing <laughs> Chief. You had him designed in 94. The- this was Bungie trying to create what would, what would be Halo. Obviously, mm. you have a lot of limitations at the time, but this yep. is their first stab at it, and yep. them just following on from that, and then you know Microsoft bought the thing, and yep. it had to be this. But um, Halo or Halo uh, Marathon was Apple only. Yeah, it you, was. You couldn't play Marathon, if which you is like you're doing your first game as a developer. Mm. All right, let's let's limit just to to Apple computers. Like why? Yeah, Apple weren't it's as big like, as they were. No, <laughs> why bother them? You're just gonna go out of business. <laughs> Worst thing was, it actually didn't look like a bad game. No, it, it looks like a Halo game. Mm. Maybe not as high res mm. graphics and and that, but it it, it looked, looks like it would have played like Halo. Yeah, it looked very interesting. It looked very very interesting. And like I say, there was a lot of people looking to get into the Doom clone pie. Lucas Arts as well released Star Wars Dark Forces. Dark Forces. Mm. The start of their 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 Jedi. Jedi Knight series? Is that what that was? Like? I think I think that's that's sort of the start of it. So like obviously, you know, you have Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, uh, mm. Jedi Academy, which all first person shooters. Well, I know you can go into third person for yep. uh, when you're fighting with a lightsaber, but primarily those games still first person shooters, mm. um, and that would go on from that series. But uh, like so, all the all these people were like right, Doom successful. Even even Doom's or uh, sorry, Ed's sister company. I forget what they were called. But they released Rise of the Triad, which was technically meant to be Wolfenstein 2. Oh, yeah. And then I got reskinned as a mobster type thing. I, I was more sort of comedy appeal as well. But everyone was clawing at Ed's crown now. And Ed were like, right, we have to do something here. Um, so 19, so I believe the next three years are big years for the first person shooter. So 96. Now... There's no denying, obviously, Doom created Deathmatch, but what Ed did mm. next perfected it, and that was quick. Oh, are we not forgetting a pretty important first-person shooter that I'm surprised that you wouldn't have mentioned before Quake? What's, I may have had it in the list here, what? Really? Hang on. Blonde-haired, red tank top. Oh, he's not till 96. <laughs> Is that not 96? Yeah. I didn't know I was, right, okay, continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> um, although, I probably should mention him first, because he was also, he, oh, he was released before, same year, earlier though, so you're absolutely right, Duke Nukem 3D, you're right, you're right, because one of the things, remember, I think it was the second level, when you blow up the building, his wee quote was, I ain't afraid of no quick, and everyone was all, oh, shots fired, <laughs> shots fired, so yeah, Duke 3D, actually, so he started as a 2D sort of side-scrolling shooter. Yeah, that, that'd be knocking around for a while, um, so yeah, it was, was it just called Duke Nukem? Just Duke Nukem, and Duke uh, Nukem 2. Yeah, sort of side-scrolling, you could shoot. And he wasn't exactly very different, very yeah. different tone. He wasn't exactly the the big macho man. He no, was. it was really cartoony yeah. looking. Um, and it was three D realms did that um, again. Everyone wanted the the Doom clone money. Um, yeah, but uh, they were. You probably, would say at the time, like they developed their own engine called the Build Engine, mm. um, and it was really really good. And I'm pretty sure it had the full mouse control. It did. Yeah, he could do um, that. And it looked amazing. It did look like, really good. Like for 
for back then. Yep. The the sort of stuff they were able to do with just the the sprite base, almost like not. I love some of the enemy. The pig cops will go down in history. Some of my favorite baddies of all time. Just big yeah. shotgun wielding pig cops. They were so cool. Really good level design. Lots of secrets. Like that's one of the things um, as well as the variation in level design. Like Doom's very much space station hell. Yep. Um, and. In Duke 3D, you were getting a lot more variation, so you were, you know, starting on actual streets. Mm. There's a lot more relatable things that you would see in the game that look like what you would see walking down the street, which is something different again. Mm. Um, and, yeah, they basically stole everything from 80s action films you have to, to make their protagonist. Yep. So, you know, everything we could all what's not to like there? The thing about, like you say, Duke, was it started off, basically on earth in the cities and stuff and then you ended up in space and all at one point looking down at earth you know mm. shooting bastards and alien or alien bastards in space and everything i should have should have mentioned that first yeah but again everyone was going after uh ed's they, they could still were considered the champions like at this point and then oh yeah and for a long time ago yeah but the next thing quake was had a really rocky development though have you ever read some of the de- how the story of how quake came apart i uh, came about like, no, it started life as an R- well, yeah, I have, as an RPG. Yeah. Like the main character was supposed to be called Quake and had like a big hammer. Oh on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I was going to say Carmack wanted to do something different. Yes. This is where you start to see cracks mm. as well between Ed, the the, the Carmack and R- Romero. Mm-hmm. Um, but still Quake. Oh, it's amazing. Really good game. Yeah, you could call it, technically you could have called it Doom Three, but it was. So good, and the big thing for it was its multiplayer. Yeah, the the whole linear or the whole sort of three D or the vertical verticality is that a word verticality? Yeah, yeah, because you had rocket jumping and low gravity things, yep. and that was amazing, amazing. So this would be you probably saying Doom the multiplayer was maybe an add on to mm-hmm. main Doom, sort of caught on, and the, from the Quake series they started developing more with multiplayer in mind mm-hmm. up to the point where obviously you go through the series and Quake 3 ends up being called Quake 3 Arena and yep. is very very much focused on multiplayer, on multiplayer mm-hmm. deathmatch team na- deathmatch capture the flag all this is where all that shit all those game modes you take for granted these days they all started as all mods. started with id <laughs> all started and, and Quake mods <laughs> and all sorts it's like a team fortress started as a Quake mod yeah <laughs> Now he's all take it for granted. And that's a, like using uh, obviously the the id engine. Mm. Um, you know, there, there's a you could go uh, through tons of games, uh, even from the the early id engine stuff uh, with Doom and that. Uh, th- like you could go through tons of games and just use that engine as well. What's the blood? Blood, yes, you have like, blood. Um, th- there's lots of lesser known stuff where people just. I like As you say, more Doom clones, but mm. using their, their engine. Same goes for, for Build Engine as well, mm. which is still being used to this day. Literally to this day. By what, 3D Realms. What did you call their new... It was called Iron Maiden, Iron and Maiden. then they got sued, and what's it called? No, it's called Ion, Ion Maiden. Ion Maiden. What's it called now? No, it is Ion Maiden. No. No, they changed the name. Ion they, Fury. Ion Fury, because they were getting sued by Iron Maiden. Boo. We'll talk about that another day. Ugh. I know, I know. So then, obviously, 96, uh, that was Quake. And at this point, the first-person shooter, it belonged to the PC. And then in 1997... What happened? Rare released a game for the N64 that changed everything for console gamers. Yeah. Goldeneye. Goldeneye. What a game. But the only problem was, if you owned a PlayStation, you couldn't play it. No. (laughs) So, one of the things that I think the reason why... That happened on the Nintendo. Obviously, rare to and exclusive stuff for mm-hmm. Nintendo. This is before Microsoft purchased them. Um, and one of the reasons they were able to do that was Nintendo's Control. idea to in- include an analog controller. 100%. Which became a replacement for a mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. We all know not as good. Mm-hmm. You, you're agreeing with that? Or? I'm, I'm going to agree for the sake of the video. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of this video, yes. N- maybe not as precise, mm. especially since they only give you one. Yeah, that was... Um, yeah. At the time, you didn't know any better, but then when Sony released the DualShock with 2, you were like, wait a minute, this is way better. Yeah. Um, but it allowed you on a, on a console to get close to the same mm. control you have with a mouse and keyboard uh, for aiming and such. Mm. Um, and that's why it had to be on a Nintendo. Yep. 
And uh, as you said, you know, other consoles caught up. Well, PlayStation caught up eventually. Eventually, yeah. Because I remember uh, at the time you had GoldenEye, um, which again, amazing game. And then within the space of six months, you had Doom sixty four. Yep. And you had Turok. Yep. And you had South Park. Do you remember that first person? Oh, show? that was awful. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> But again, it was first-person shooters all on the N64. So I bet when you're thinking about console, like today, you've got your Call of Duties on console, mm -hmm. like all the, the console first-person shooters. I bet you didn't think it was Nintendo yep. that started that It was shit. all Nintendo. <laughs> well, it was Nintendo that made it work. Yeah. Because Doom was released in 95 on the PlayStation. Well, that see... <laughs> Again, original Doom, like it didn't give you the full degree of movement. Like when Doom first released, you couldn't mm. go up and down. No. So that's why maybe the analog directions work for going forward, back, left, right. It, it did kind of work, but it was kind of annoying that you had to sort of stop to turn with a D pad. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Doom was on the PlayStation, and that was my first experience sort of playing. Takes Doom. away all the speed. Yeah, it did. Like to strafe in Doom on the PlayStation, you had to hold triangle i believe and then you had to hold left and right and then to shoot you had to press x so your hand was in like this weird <laughs> fucking claw motion so it it's not the only first person shooter on playstation because there was also uh alien trilogy there was alien trilogy how did that do it i, I can't i've played this game because i have vivid memories of how facehuggers would crawl up over the screen and that that yep. wasn't good nope i um, haven't my mini playstation didn't have played it and i think it is very much like doom it was kind of the D-pad to move around. Mm, mm. But again, that was, the that was I think, for the, the PlayStation. Obviously, GoldenEye was developed for the N64, as was the other games. These were PC ports just on the PlayStation. Yeah. So I think that's why they didn't play as well. And again, this is why the N64 was a big deal, especially GoldenEye, literally. Because I remember at the time, there was a couple of guys I was in school, and they were like, oh, GoldenEye will end up in the PC at some stage. Never did. No. It was Nintendo's um, boy. That was a bunch of people who don't understand how the games industry works. Not back then, when you were 11 <laughs> years old. <laughs> um, but it was, it was a really, really big deal. And You'll never, ever be able to get that game in any other way unless you have that original N64. 100%. Uh, because rights, yeah. like, you know, it's a movie franchise. Mm. That Rare, obviously, is now owned by Microsoft. And mm. it's just, you're never going to be able to. You get Perfect Dark, though, which is... I think game. it's better. It's, I have very, yep, yep. Actually, no. I, I prefer I, I prefer the setting. It's mostly the setting because like, I'm not that and never was really like into James, James Bond, Bond and uh, Perfect Dark Soul, very noir, cyberpunky mm. detective. Is, is GoldenEye still like the greatest licensed game ever made? No. I don't think Movie so. Movie-wise? No. Uh, uh, maybe. Movie games aren't great. There are some great, like, this is an our first person shooter, and we're jumping ahead a bit, but okay. Chronicles of Riddick. Okay, good shot. Okay. I good. think I would play that before I would play Goldeneye, and I know I'm probably the only person that thinks that. You probably are. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so that was 97, big year for the, the console first person shooter, and like I said, it was 98 when the Dual Shock was released, and that's when things started picking up for PlayStation. But in 98 as well, oh. the game changed again, but this was PC. This was like. Like, before this, first-person shooters were very, here's a level, shoot the bad guys, get to the end. Here's yeah. a level, shoot the bad guys, get to the end. You maybe have, have to find a key. Oh, yeah, maybe. find a key. I know GoldenEye had objectives, like, you know, hack this computer or things like that. So they but it was them. essentially just a different way of finding a key. Yeah, exactly. And then a game came along developed by someone called Valve, and they released Half-Life. And uh, they broke it. They broke it, indeed. They They're like, went, wait, wait a minute, we can <laughs> tell, use this to tell stories? <laughs> The, no one had ever seen anything like this like when Half-Life was released its reviews were going through the roof like, yeah people couldn't understand what they were so the, one of the I know they're not to your taste no not really but they I are, it them. is slow mm. um, I think if you got through that opening section of that you would uh, I probably yeah. uh, you would probably appreciate it more because it uh, does action picks up mm. um, but yeah they, they told an immersive story all from within the uh, the game itself. Mm. Uh, so you had uh, and non-combatant NPCs that would talk to you. You like Gordon Freeman? Don't talk. Nope, he so don't talk. He's he's your character, and he's not saying anything. So people sort of talk at you. Um, and everything is done. It's not with cutscenes. It doesn't have cutscenes. It's just the characters talk. You 
still usually have control. Mm. No, you do. You always have always. control of your character, um, which is the thing I love about. I like when a game gets around that, mm-hmm. where they're like, "All right, cutscene can be nice, but if you can not take me out of the game world, and and still get your story across, that's really good game design. That's, that's genius, so it is. Um, and this was Valve doing this back in 1998. Um, 21 I, years ago. Yeah, and you can see how they, they made so much money to spin off and become what they are today. Yeah. Um, do we just cover all of Half-Life now? Just for the rest or, of the video? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, do you, or do you want to not talk to... Ha- the the follow up until you get to right. Well, to be honest, at this point, this is no, no, let, let, right, okay. From from what we've discussed till Half Life is what I would call the origins of the first person shooter. That's how it all came to be. What we have today, yeah, yeah. Now the next big influence, I believe, on first person shooters wasn't even a game. Very quickly, I it? believe it was a movie called Save a Private Ryan. Oh yeah, because then you had Medal of Honor. Yeah. Which Steven Spielberg actually worked on as well. Exactly. Well, he consulted on it. Consulted. Um, but it was to get that feel. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven Spielberg, obviously very important with that film, mm-hmm. sort of created that World War II feel, the, mm-hmm. the way the music, everything we like expect from something World War II in, a, in any sort of media, that, mm-hmm. that all stemmed from, from that film. Big time. So um, right. And, uh, 99, that was released. So that was the first first-person shooter on PlayStation that actually let you use the dual sticks. Yeah. So that was the first time PlayStation had a, a fully functioning, shall I say, first-person shooter. And I remember playing it, yep. and I was loving it. I remember the first time trying to uh, play a shooter with uh, dual uh, analog sticks and being like, this is fucking pish. Oh, man. I, I Do you can't, remember? I can't hit anything. <laughs> this is never going to catch on. It's a load of bollocks. <laughs> yeah, no. I remember thinking that as well. And then someone someone described, I think it was a guy in school, says, no, Stuart, think of it like this. Think of the left stick as your legs and the right stick as your eyes. And I was like, right, okay. And I slowly started to <laughs> work my way around it. But it took me like weeks to come to terms with this. But yeah. you look at it now, it's like... I, I remember you- trying to play... Um, Oni, yeah, or that's not a bungee game, isn't it? I believe so. Um, on the PlayStation, that that was one of the first dual analog games I played, and just not being able, like, you'd be running sideways and all, <laughs> and like, like you're drunk. <laughs> was, you, know, you kept trying to use the left stick to turn <laughs> and move, <laughs> <laughs> just like you were used to. Uh, you're yeah, absolutely right, like you were pushed. But uh, Medal of Honor then obviously led on to the big cinematic first-person shooter. Um, again, yeah. no, nobody was still doing it like Valve, just one big story. Yeah. The, on console, at least, uh, it was still level by level. Uh-huh. Um, and then obviously, uh, was it 2001 or two? I do apologize, I don't have the exact year, but a very big game was released for consoles. And that was Halo. Halo. Uh, so you're you're right. We're off the PlayStation generation. We're into PlayStation Two, Xbox. Xbox. Yep. Uh, yeah. Halo. This is, this is another game changer. This this like, this set the standard for console shooters. I believe the yeah. rule of two. They called it. Yeah. Total. They totally invented the console shooter. Ignore all those <laughs> ones we've been talking about up yeah. until now. Yeah. According to Bungie, they invented the console shooter. They have actually said this. They they said this. It's like no, you're. you're <laughs> You may have invented the Apple II we, first person shooter, but like you definitely didn't. See when we upload this video, I'll send it to Bungie's Twitter and go, "Hi, hey, you there's a wee history lesson for you lads, you know." But don't get me wrong, Halo was a big fucking deal. Halo's some of the the stuff with Halo, like the AI mm-hmm. was immense. The the shooting really tight, um, and they introduced this sort of realism like for a thing where you play as a, a, a massive spaceman fighting on a big ring in, in space yep um they added realism that the where you were limited to holding two guns which made you have to make choices and mm. think right what way am i going to play this um do i need the rocket launcher or am i going sniper rifle i can't carry it all um which so many games have copied since to this day yep like it, it they um, pretty much Halo killed the arena, almost killed the arena shooter. Almost, yeah. And that the the you know carrying fifty guns and being able to cycle through them. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I think what it was again, the, people will blame consoles for this. Obviously, on PC, you have numbers like one to nine, and you know your yeah. guns. You can just quickly hit four. Yeah, and then you blow things up. It's great, right? Mm. Um, 
A console you obviously don't have Weapon that Weapon wheels are shit. No matter what, they're always shit. Back in the day, they certainly were. I think they're still shit now. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, okay. But... The, I know what you, do you remember even like the likes of the Doom on a game PS1 you didn't even have a wheel you just had to keep hitting left left yeah left, until you got your gun until you got your gun so you basically just used what you had but Halo decided right two guns so why changes your gun that's it yeah you pick up whatever you wanted but like I say it was an agonizing choice back then it was like I like rocket launchers but I only get two bullets yeah <laughs> But um, I don't know why I had an Irish accent when I thought that sorry <laughs> you do have an Irish accent oh yeah good point <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, but uh, Halo changed so many things out but beyond that making you think about what weapons you were going to carry with you. Mm. Um, and also, like, the their approach to level design, mm -hmm. very open. Really up until then, you were looking at first-person shooters. Even Half-Life, mm. um, you're, you're basically a corridor, and maybe you'd open up into a wider area into another corridor, whereas... Mm -hmm. Halo at the time seemed like these levels were were sprawling, yep. um, and there's different ways you could maybe approach things. I, I remember playing it the, for the the first time and seeing enemies run away from me. Yeah, because it was just grunts, and they're like, "Oh shit, it's the Master Chief! Get <laughs> the fuck out of here!" You felt like a fucking badass. Yeah, but then <laughs> then you run after them, and there's a bunch of elites there. Then you're like, "Oh, oh shit!" shit. <laughs> Especially when the laser swords came out, you're like, "Ah oh, fuck." <laughs> Uh, uh, so, like some some big innovations for for design, level design and, mm -hmm. and AI out of out of Bungie there, um, and obviously they they keep the uh, the storytelling going as well. Like uh, as you're saying, like Half Life and the Medal of Honor into to Halo, the big cinematic. Mm. So that's a really good word for that. It's the cinematic first person shooter. So this was the big thing at the uh, after the likes of Halo and your you know obviously it was a year later you did your first Call of Duty because the Medal of Honor guys broke off. They made Call of Duty. Um, Call of Duty obviously we all know is a massive massive franchise. Yeah, started in World oh, War Two. Yeah, you're, you're forgetting one other uh, more PC based World War Two game. Help me out. Battlefield. Well. Oh yeah, that would have been first. You're right. Sorry. So the first Battlefield was multiplayer only. Yeah. Well, Battlefield's always been uh, a primarily multi well, no, only multiplayer. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's no unless you want to do a match with bots, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, Battlefield is a multiplayer game, a mm. multiplayer only. Um, and it was the big thing about it was vehicles when you're in your first big, person. Massive battle. So the, the couple of things about Battlefield. So. Up until Battlefield, you're looking at what? What a Doom sixteen. Sixteen. Um, that was your sort of. You know, it's standard. you remember get sixteen aside, eight aside, that sort of mm. thing. Um, the Battlefield, they wanted they wanted to create the feeling of you being in a war. You're in this massive battle, so it was thirty two aside, mm. which was huge. That was a big sixty four player games, big massive maps. Yep. Uh, which allow for, as you said, the use of vehicles. You had tanks, choppers, land, all this. Land, air, and sea. Yep. Um, and also the idea of a game mode that would see a lot more push and pull than a deathmatch where you're just killing everyone or yep. you're just grabbing a flag and getting it back to your base. Yep. Um, uh, conquest. Conquest. It's which is the, their big thing where they, they have the big massive map and there's basically control points that you have to control as a team. You control more points uh, the closer you get to winning and they also provide a tactical advantage for you have more places when you die that you can spawn into mm. and maybe flank the enemy. Um, huge massive that mostly, uh, I don't think any of that came to any sort of console, did it? We, not at first? No, no, we didn't see a battlefield until I think it was the Xbox 360. You, they did release Battlefield 2 on the 360, but it just, it was a really bad port. Yeah. So then they created Bad Company, specifically for consoles. Oh, yeah. So they they actually worked very well. But the other big thing Battlefield introduced, I almost forgot, was your rules and your classes. Oh, yeah, that's right. The the class system as well. Mm -hmm. So you have medics, assault, engineer, sniper. So different classes Scout. got different weapons. Yep. And, and different then, abilities. Right, and so, the, the, I mean, obviously, Battlefield series big thing still today yeah still going strong today like battlefield 5 is is one of the main games we play it is yep. um yep. say what you want about it it's still damn good. damn good game it's good game it's very good game um now obviously that was that was around you're you're definitely hitting the 360 sort of uh at this at this stage 
Now, yeah, so the, the period I would get into, uh, I would call the brown period. We are hitting the brown period here. <laughs> this is when your PS3 was released and you had the likes of your resistance games. You had... Yeah, so th- this is where I got... Yeah, I got to the point that one of the easiest ways to make games was to make a first-person first shooter and to, to get a lot of games out there. And um, Unlike to today where you'll see, you know, you've got your indie side, mm. which is... You didn't have back then. You Mm-mm. you really really didn't. Uh, you either have your indie games or your big massive title today. Back then, you had your big massive titles, and then a bunch of what is usually referred to as B games. Mm-hmm. Um, so lower budget, uh, just churned out by studios. If you watch our Konami video, we go through their sort of back catalog where you can see list how their what the their output sort of balloons up with all these titles and then comes way back down as they scale back again. And that's kind of every big developer or yep. publisher was doing that. Because um, the launch of the PlayStation, uh, the, the Xbox and the PlayStation launched very close together. Do you remember the 360 had the Perfect Dark launch title? They did. It was awful. It, was aw- it, wasn't, it wasn't rare, obviously. It was rare. It was- that was after they had bought Rare. That's how they were able to make that. That rare made that game. It couldn't have been the same team, though. I'd probably not, because probably people not. would have moved on. They were free radical. The guys that made yeah, it. The <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, all right. right. So, uh, this, oh, this is going to sound great. So before before they made Yeah, hey, we're going to head ourselves 360. You haven't even talked about one of your favorite first-person shooters, which well, is was, a PlayStation 2 era. I was going to mention it when we mentioned the terrible game, because, right, so plays, the, the guys that made GoldenEye and Perfect Dark made an incredible series called Time Splitters on the PlayStation 2. And yeah. the GameCube and the, the original Xbox, and they're widely loved. The, I don't want to go into it because I would spill my guts about them, but they are fantastic. They're, basically, it was GoldenEye and Perfect Dark on all consoles, which is pretty much what it felt like. So they had got a lot of attention. They they were they were the the big guys in the first person shooter market. So Sony sort of says, right, do you fancy making a game exclusive for our PS3? And they were like, okay, but Ubisoft will be deve- or publishing. Now they had this. Because their 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 time splitters games were very quirky, very funny. Again, they created all these crazy little multiplayer modes, and they had monkeys with freaking cowboy yep. hats and all. It was that's why it, it just recognize the props. That, like it, it is the logical step going from making Goldeneye, making Perfect Dark, and then taking that same format and seeing how they can evolve it. Now, like through the first maybe by the the third time splitters game that showed slow down a bit. Mm-hmm. They they were doing. A bit more story stuff, yes. whereas the first two games were very much uh, here's just, a level. just here's a level, and they try to get into story stuff, and maybe that wasn't great, but nah. whatever. But anyway, so Sony, Ubisoft, they're making this game called He Is. Called He Is. Yeah. And now, when we first saw footage of it, this was Free Radical had just put this together before anything else had really been announced, and they were they were sort of promising us, "Don't worry, monkeys will be back, and all this yeah, is going to be good." Crack. No, that was never going to happen. N- well, not no. by the tone of this game. Ubisoft, this is the, the most new metal game you've ever seen. It's too it, serious. Yeah, Ubisoft came in and went, "Nah, get rid of all that. Uh, we want to. We want something that can compete with Call of Duty. We want something that can compete with yeah. Battlefield." Now, was this at the time where Call of Duty had Call of Duty seen? Two was on the three hundred and sixty? Right. So it was selling like fucking wildfire, and then the, yeah. the Sony needed something to compete it. So Free Radical, this fun-loving studio, had to make this deadly serious game. Super serious, starring a bunch of bro heads, yep. shooting up performance-enhancing drugs. To, yep. uh, it, was, <laughs> it was bloody awful. And Corn did the soundtrack. Yep. <laughs> it was bloody awful. It got bloody awful reviews, and that was the end of Free. That's been the end of Free Radical ever since. Yep. And that type of game was. Everywhere, Everywhere. there is like that is not going to stand out. There's so many of that. It's just like I consider the resistance stuff like that as yep, well. Yep. That's why I call the brown period because everything's just brown. Resistance one brown was very everywhere. brown. Resistance two was okay. I never played the third one. I think I'd moved on at that stage. But even the once great Wolfenstein fell into this, so it did. Yeah. In 2009, there was a new Wolfenstein game, and it was just brown with a bit of green, and it was just so bland and generic. Every syndicate which was a fucking uh, real time strategy co- yeah think uh, company sort of sabotage game not first person shooter now uh, there was an RPG series called Shadow Shadowfall or something that used to be on PC not it's a first person mm. shooter now and everything was just that everything's a first person shooter and people started to get a wee bit like pissed off with this yeah now I think we, 
what we would say this would be after Call of Duty Four at this point as well. It, it is technically after, but I think so. You're you're at a point now in history where the the first person shooter is uh, oversaturated in the market. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we've seen things that have happened along the way, there's there's always someone that comes in and smashes it and and changes the game again. And mm. as you said, Call of Duty. Long running series we've done three games in World War Two. Yep. World War Two, people were absolutely fucking sick of it at this point. Yeah. Didn't want to be hearing like you know, mournful trumpets anymore. Yeah, Call, Call of Duty three <laughs> actually didn't review quite well, you see. No, no. And so so they decided, what if we do modern day shit? Boom. And then completely change the game again. Mm-hmm. And so you had um primarily multiplayer focused. Yeah. Uh, did have a good campaign done in a sort of Middle Eastern Russia America style story but then in the campaign but just had that really really quick really yeah. snappy um, military action game which more arcadey than other ones because there's all this stuff out there that, that do the military stuff and take it super seriously but Call of Duty gets that kind of in the middle like it's it's realistic enough it's sort of realistic adjacent, mm. but it's still more like a Quaker and Unreal. Yeah. Than it felt an arena ish. It yeah. felt arena ish. Yeah, it does. Um, and I, so they changed the, the, the face of uh, online multiplayer again. They really did that. And sort of started off a new trend of modern military have to push a button to aim down and say, no, they weren't the first to do that because, no. you know, Battlefield was already yep. around that sort of thing. But. But everything um, wanted then a piece of the Call of Duty pie. It was like, right, yeah. this is big. Everyone doing modern sort of military shit. And Activision wanted that pie all to themselves, so oh, yeah. needs for the need to release one every three. single year. It has been one since, hasn't there? Yeah, sure they're up, but uh, they they have three separate studios, so each That's each right. game gets a three year development cycle. Mm. So it's not like they're yeah, it's not like a FIFA situation where I they're have. like like a paint kick it out the door every year <laughs> please buy our fake cards uh, you've got your three big sort of you've got your your black ops you've got your uh modern warfares and then what's the old, you've got your sort of three sort of main yeah so so modern warfare is the the from spins off from the first one you got black ops uh and then there was advanced advanced War, and infinite That's infinite right. warfare which is that we the get future. into the more sci-fi stuff which mm. people didn't really I didn't like. take it uh, and Call of Duty's been going through so like, like such a massive high was the biggest thing around back mm-hmm. then, and then fell off greatly. Mm. Um, and then obviously Activision have tried things like they brought back World War Two. Yep, that done to, quite to well. Grab that that yep. went well, and then so the the soft reboot of Modern, Modern Warfare that we've had this year, mm. um, which seems to be working. Yeah, they they took a battlefield approach and did sixty four players online. Yeah, they vehicles did, the, and did their own sort of version of conquest, but at mm. the speed of which a, mm. a Call of Duty game plays at is absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> but in a good way, probably. I haven't played it, so I I, I, I do apologize. If we jumped ahead a wee quick, but but I'll, yeah. we'll reverse very quickly. So bef- we didn't even talk about Half Life Two. I know, I know. That's what I was going to say. We should probably go back very quickly. So uh, roll it by. This is we're, we're at the Brown. This is two thousand nine, two thousand twelve period. So yeah, we're going to jump uh, back to about two thousand two because there was another big series we didn't mention. Yeah, Unreal. Unreal. So uh, Unreal. I, I, you're going back for there again, but that's that's coming off the the quick mm. sort of thing. It's an old like arena shooter. We, shoot we, we we don't need a no story uh, here. We don't need a story. Shoot a rank. Um, and quick sort of. It uh, as you said, it went down the arena style. As yeah, well. just pure arena. It's it's very mm. uh, yeah. Unreal is very adjacent to quick, but um, although quick fell into the brown period as well. Remember quick four? Did I? Quick four. It even felt sort of unreal. Yeah, yeah, everything. Unreal went up to 2004. Uh, this is probably one of the best Unreal, Unreal yeah. tournament 2004. That's what I remember. Um, but then Unreal went and uh, they, they released a, a PlayStation 3 one, which wasn't... What was that called again? Unreal Tournament 3. 3, yeah. It wasn't very good. No, they tried to do a story mode and all. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Nah, just screw just let me shoot bastards. Although it was the first console game where you could mod. Yeah. You could mod... You could create levels and stuff. PlayStation Network was real dodgy back then. You yep. couldn't get a decent game. No, you couldn't. Oh, <laughs> Ever. Christ. Oh, I remember that. 
Um, but yeah, then obviously 2004, same type of period, Half Life came out again. Yeah, so um, Half Life did another massive uh, innovation uh, that affected not just first person shooters, but I think all games. Um, that is physics. Yes, having a physics engine, mm-hmm. having puzzles where you have to use physics, the way of like the most basic thing I think of is mm. you've got a seesaw, put a box on one side so you can run up the yep. other side and get somewhere. Um, continue their, their sort of storytelling. Their levels were a lot more open mm. uh, in this one. And then, obviously, they, they did dip their toe in sort of episodic stuff with uh, the follow-up to that with ep- Half-Life 2, Episode 1, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and then famously didn't make a third one. Yeah. Never happened. <laughs> God damn. People stole it. Although, you know, we get, we'll talk about the future of the first-person shooter, obviously. But uh, So obviously, obviously, you're 2002, then you had your Call of Duties and things, which sort of brings us to the Brown period. So the Brown period, had everyone's getting a wee bit pissed off. Everyone's getting a bit, right, the first-person shooter's getting a wee bit. Uh. Yep. So then 2014, right? Uh-huh. everyone's been sort of fed up with the whole, right, a first-person shooter has to be realistic and cinematic and you, you can only hold two guns, blah, blah, blah. And then the original came back again. Wolfenstein? Old, old BJ Blazkowicz came back again and goes, right, fuck this, here's a good story, but I'm also going to hold 30 guns and shoot loads of Nazis and it's going to be awesome fun again. Yeah. And it was awesome. The New Order. Yeah. I would say it's had a, a sequel. Yep. Um, but I think that helped really kick in where other old school games have came back as well. Yeah. So the, by this time, it's been purchased by Bethesda. Mm-hmm. So they, they this is sort of the, the restart, like have them release one of their old franchises. And it really, really good. Really well. Uh, I haven't played that most recent spin off one. I've heard yeah. mixed things about that. So there's some Bethesda microtransaction bullshit in there. But oh what do you expect? Um, but yeah, that's, that led into. Them, well, we made another Wolfenstein. Let's do another Doom. Let's do the, the granddaddy. Well, the weird Even thing... Even though that's technically Wolfenstein, but whatever. <laughs> the weird thing about Doom was Doom 4 was talked about since, what, 2008? And then apparently in 2012, when when the whole purchase thing happened, yeah. uh, it went to them, we want to start again. And yeah. And Bethesda went, all right, off you go. It's been too long. Doom 3 wasn't that well received. May mm. as well, clean break, let's, let's start again. And... They basically went, right, Doom was famous for balls out action. Let's go balls out action again. Yeah. And it again, and they did. It went it done really well as well. Obviously we have an upcoming sequel there. And then obviously Quick had Quick Champions. Didn't do as well as Wolfenstein and Doom, but I think it's still mm-hmm. hanging in there. It's in there. But it, it's such a really good evolution of the, the style of game of Doom because Doom 3 slowed stuff down. It was a, a lot, lot of more jump horror. scary mm. sort of I would consider it another one of them brown games. It, it, it mm. really is. Um the Doom remake is basically takes the, the essence of the original Doom, which is all about running and shooting. And it's like, you need to run and shoot or you're dead. Yeah. You stand still in that game, you're, you're dead. dead. You need to keep moving, keep shooting. That's how you get health back. Yep. Just don't stop for nothing. And that that's oh, just yeah. really, really good. That was the other thing Halo brought in, regenerating health. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, Call of Duty likes that too. Well, the, Most the, the, they, they weren't that bad. They had regenerating shields, it's, and then your health under the shield right, would, wouldn't uh, recharge. And then other people brought in the whole, just um, sit still and you, you heal. Around the same period, you say people fed up with the sort of brown, uh, we're saying fed up with that sort of generic brown looking thing. Why is my mic not making... Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I just got really quiet there for a second. I see you did. Um, so we saw, we haven't talked about Overwatch. Well, this is the next big thing I was going to talk about. Obviously, uh, it was Overwatch after Doom. It was around the same time. It was around about the same time. Same t- 2016. So it would have been the same time. I, no, because I think I remember talking to you about Doom and then you started telling me I should buy Overwatch because it wasn't about kills and deaths and all that there shit. It was all about winning. Winning just, the match. Winning the fucking match. Yeah, because that's what I was talking about. Doom was just important for winning. Yeah. And then you were saying Overwatch was the same thing. So yeah, Overwatch, another big influence. It's, it's only three years old, but it is an influencer. It really fucking oh, is. Oh, yeah. So they they started the idea of, right, we can have an arena-based shooter, uh, but then let's take 
the sort of classes start thing that mm. like Battlefield does. So you have different roles and that. Uh, let's make them these really unique characters that people will get attached to. Like a fighting game? Like a fighting game, yeah. Um, and have all these abilities. Uh, and like each character has their own predetermined weapon. You're not picking up weapons. Yep, no ammo and, or not. Um, it's not about kills. It's about winning the game. Which yep. uh, Anyone that's played a Battlefield game or Call of Duty game will know that some people just play for the kills yep. and don't give a fuck if their team wins or loses. Whereas... Yep. Overwatch, all there is is winning or losing. Yep. Yeah, you might get a play of the game. You might get the most kills. But uh, the kill count in Overwatch doesn't matter as nope. much because to get a kill, all you have to do is get some damage on someone that dies. So it doesn't mm-hmm. even mean that you actually killed them when yep. it's counting them. So Because um, the big thing that displays in Overwatch is your win ratio. They don't give a shit yeah. about your kills or your death. Your win ratio is important, so you have to push to yeah. win. It's pretty small team, so it's 6v6. Six six six. Six. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so you need to be working cohesively as a team yeah. to win a game. Um, yeah, we played that a lot. A lot. We got our uh, money's worth out of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, we weren't a bad team. The Evil no, D crew. No, not, we, we not weren't terrible. We weren't. We weren't terrible. We won some good games. Um, but I, I love the fact that the, the the game modes were so simple as well. You had your very conquest type one where you had to defend a point or take over a point, depending on if you were attacking or defending. Yeah. And then you had your pushing, sort of push and pull the the point. Yeah. Brilliant. That so, that so was your two main modes. Like pretty unique modes for for a first person shooter. And that was Blizzard's first. Attempt at a first-person shooter. Yeah, they did pretty well. Yeah, the guys that make bloody World of Warcraft and Diablo made a first-person shooter. Starcraft. And, and Starcraft. And all that. Pretty good. Well, that kind of brings us up to where we are now. Now, I know, um, obviously, there's a couple of first-person shooters to be released, the likes of the new Doom, Overwatch 2, things like that. Yeah, and you know, they're that, sort of just continuing what yeah. they were doing, um, slight changes, so we're, we're still in that... Uh, no, obviously, Resurgence? Call, Call of Duty's still in there. Hmm. And I think it's just found its groove mm. up uh, up until now. It's like, there's these different ni- niches. There's, like, it's got to be, like, there's variations on it so much. So you've mm. got your, you know, your your Battlefield and Call of Duty, which are, are sort of towards your more realistic end. Mm. You've got things like Rainbow Six Siege, which oh, is yeah. massive. And massive. it's it's like a 6v6, one defends, one attacks. That's very each, about each the physics round. as well, though. But they've been supporting that game over three years. Four, four years? years. And been doing a really good job. It's an and yeah, you say physics, you can shoot through walls and stuff. Yeah. Um and they, they keep getting more and more bonkers. I think they have 50-odd characters in it. So cause it's very character-based, taking mm. influence from Overwatch as well with different abilities and weapons for mm. characters. Um, so I, I think this is sort of a... Like each of those games is, is filling a different type of, of first-person shooter. Mm. And, and that's that's where we are now. That each has got a fan base. So you're just waiting now. What's the next big thing well before we started i think you're hit the nail on the head when you said vr yeah this is where the first person shooter is really going to shine for some people i think that like you can't get more immersive than vr so I'd, i've i've played some vr shooters and like they do different things that there there's there's certain difficulties with it you know like how do you run around mm. um do you want realism or you know bonker stuff like you're never gonna do doom or quake stuff in vr you know people <laughs> throw, throwing up all over the place um there's different ways of of traversing so you've got like a, some games do a teleport style stuff like um one i play is robo recall mm. uh where you shoot robots um like waves of robots it's very much shooting gallery type stuff mm. and that's what a lot of the first person shooter stuff is on vr at the moment is just shooting gallery which maybe not the most engaging thing it's like mm. it's fun because you're in vr but once sort of the novelty wears off mm. what do you go to you've also got the there's the realist realistic gun and multiplayer things like pavlov uh calvert zero um doing the uh you know here's realistic models of guns um and they behave like guns and you're sitting there with an m4 being how the hell do you cock an m4 again there's nothing on the side and then realize oh it's on the back over the stock yeah i did that once crazy (laughs) um and then obviously very very recently valve just announced 
New Half Life. New Half Life. Half Life Alex. Literally within the next the last couple of days. Which so. is VR. Yeah. Which I hope no one Valve they don't release games very often and when they do it's usually something very special. Yeah. Um This isn't gonna be something that's just been thrown yeah. out there. I really hope they hit that what that whatever that magic X factor is that needs to just get VR legitimized mm. as a gaming platform. Because it's made progress over, over the years that since it started but it, there's not that one thing that goes oh my god you need to see this yeah. you need to do this this could be it um and to make it a thing that people are always going to go to and apparently this is a full length like the length of half-life 2 game it is priced accordingly as well okay um you vr games are usually short shorter experiences they're usually mm. cheaper um most of the vr games i own aren't even finished so like this is like the thing's still very much in its uh, early days. Um, but Val's like the big guy coming in. And yeah. of course, the other one is EA are making a new Medal of Honor, uh, which is being made by Respawn. Ooh. The guys who used to make Call of Duty, Duty. when they were at uh, different developers spun off, made... Um, Titanfall. Titanfall, which is excellent mm-hmm. first-person shooter, and also made Apex. another one of our favorites, Apex. Legends, um, great game, and they're well. making a new Medal of Honor in VR. Jeez, that'll be good. So you've got some big boys coming in and mm. trying some first-person shooters in VR. It'll be interesting to see if they manage to, you know, crack it. Well, here's hoping. Here is hoping. Um, that, that's pretty big news. I didn't know that Respawn were doing that now. Did that, you not? You not know that? Is there any footage of it? There uh, is. A, good, good, good. Because we look forward it, to it, putting it, that up. Yeah, it looks real good. You know, it, it's one of those things like you can lift and, and throw stuff. Um, looking at the the video Valve put out, one of the things it seemed that they were trying to get across is your interactivity with the environment. I mean, a lot of the the games I played so far is like you've got your guns that you can interact with. You can move around. And you can shoot the things you you can shoot, but other than that, in the world, you're not really interacting. Mm. But in the video uh, for Half Life Alex, you're like, you know, you're moving stuff out of the way to peek between shelves. So you're moving the stuff on the shelves, um, you know, just finding random ammo behind things. Mm. So the interactivity with the world, I think, is probably the thing that VR really needs. But that will take a lot of work. Mm. But it's Valve. Yeah. They, they have unlimited money. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Well, there you go. Um, we're, we're just hitting the over the R mark, so uh, thanks for, for watching, folks. And hey, you know what? Uh, the, this VR thing, as much as we've always, well, as I've always said, oh, it might be a wee gimmick now that the big boys are starting to come in. This could be actual big proper big deal, and this could actually be the future of the first-person shooter. Maybe. It's... it's you are the player now. You're you're no longer playing a character. Although was, oh, I really hope they don't do Duke Nukem in VR because that'll just be like porn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, Duke's really immature, and that'll just end up everyone, all the teenage guys, getting into the strip club and knows, coming out. I don't think it's ever going to stop. Um, you know, the mouse and keyboard. Oh no, no. type stuff or console. You'll still like that. That's always going to be there yeah. for first person shooters. There's just stuff you're never going to be able to do in VR mm. unless you own some sort of massive warehouse <laughs> yeah. that you can play in. Um, so, like the traditional first person shooter is always going to like. It's never, never going to stop. Nah, never. I don't think it's someone will always sends another way to make it more interesting. Mm. Hopefully, it's Ed. <laughs> <laughs> they are the dad. Well, I, 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 I'm, there you go. I just kind of balled up the end there but yeah there you go so thanks for joining us this i'm not gonna say this month this year for <laughs> year I don't know this what, episode this episode thanks for joining us this episode uh join us next time when we will be discussing something else i'm not even gonna, <laughs> i'm not even gonna try and hazard a guess what it'll be because we'll probably change our minds whenever we feel like it whenever we feel this like. is unscripted unplanned and technically this was completely unplanned i just landed at your door and says hey let's do yep. unscripted okay let's go <laughs> so uh thanks for joining us folks we'll see you next time